Hello and welcome to Blue House Bowl Session. We are happy to be here today, uh, and we are joined by Diet Mr. Pibb. Thank you for being here today, joining us. Good a, to have a Blue House alumni. Good to have you back in town too, man. I, I'm sorry we didn't get together yesterday, but we're going to have to catch up one way or the other. How's it going? How's yeah, it everybody? Like we were really been? busy yesterday. It, it yeah it it I I, I get myself kind of over overcommitted maybe. <laughs> So what's shaking? What's new? What's exciting? How's things going? Uh, I'm just in town. Uh, yeah, I'm one of the Blue House members that moved out of state. We've had we've had quite a it's motley it's crew over the years. years. Yeah. We have our, our our little agenda here. I should probably bring that up. But she usually beats me to it. Um, yeah. What is new? What have you found since the last recording? That's a good one. <laughs> tell your nugget story. I know you, you, you gave me the short of it, but like tell us tell us what McDonald's did to you. You can order a forty piece nugget. Yes, logically it is four boxes of ten. It is mathematically the best option if you're going to get nuggets and you want nuggets later. It is not that much more than a 20-piece nugget. It is like 13-something, and a 20-piece is 9-something. So you're getting twice as many nuggets for only $3 more. Yeah. And they screwed me. First of all, I only got two boxes of 10, so I got half the nuggets. And the six pe and the 40-piece nugget comes with six sauces. I only got two. Yikes. Here's the worst part. The 20 piece nugget on its own comes with three. Right. Right. I, the only reason I ordered is I wanted the goddamn sauce. The the new one, the the, the double U sauce. It's good. Yeah, it, it's actually good. It's like a spicy chili, you know, Thai red spicy chili flake goop. I'm into that. I, I want to try it. I haven't had a chance to try it yet, but I am absolutely looking forward to, to give it, giving it a shot. But uh, yeah, it, it sounds like a challenge. Thing. I had a I had a home cooked dinner tonight, so I didn't have McDonald's. And see, that's the smart way to do it. That is a smart way to do it. Why? Well, if I would have left on time, I was originally planning to put in the order, stop it the gas station either on the way there or on the way back and be back here when he got here around six. And yeah. then I ADHD on the internet for a minute. I have no idea at all what that's like. No, not, not even a whisper of a clue. I've never wasted one second on the internet. It's all been uh, vital and valuable, important work. Yes. Very productive. Oh, I found a beer. Ooh. I got I got coffee. Caffeine's my 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 go to well, you know. You know. Oh yeah, I I get caffeine headaches when I don't have the <laughs> I don't even know what the agenda is. What are we talking about? I should get you the link to that. No, oh, actually no. No, we're not. We're, we're going to make you be an outside participant. <laughs> I'm not an active participant in my own life most days, so this won't be any different. Oh, you'll be an active participant. You, we'll, we'll just be kind of flying blind and following your lead. Or vice versa. No, that's not a good idea. Well, one of the things I had in the notes that we wanted to talk about, and... Uh, the game that inspired this was talking about Placid Plastic Duck Simulator. Is games that we know entirely too much lore about. What, what what video game or game in general do you have like too solid a grasp of the backstory? Uh, for me it's Fallout. I have researched the lore on that quite a bit. And Warhammer, even though I don't play it. Fantasy or 40k? Or both. Uh, 40k. The 40k lore is 
wild. I keep hearing that, and I keep seeing memes about it and understanding approximately a quarter of it because I don't have as much backing in it as you do, but it seems terrifying. <laughs> like like horror awesome. novel levels. Yeah, from the lore, being a human is awful. I mean, that's not wrong in and of itself. <laughs> Uh, there's estimated, they don't know exactly how many people there are, there's either like 15 quintillion humans in the universe in 40k. Uh, so there's not enough resources to go around. Most planets are mined to the point of no resources left and everyone's just left there to die. Hmm. The God Emperor is 40,000 years old and is basically a corpse. Uh, and you have to sacrifice a thousand psychics to him a day to keep him alive. Wow. Okay, yeah, that part I did not know. <laughs> that is... Yeah, he uh, he was, like, super all-powerful, but he got in a fight with his brother, I think it was, and he was holding back in the fight and almost got killed. And then realized that his brother wasn't worth saving, killed him, and then they put him on life, super life support, and now he's been like that for 30,000 years. That is... I, I, I don't even know what to make of that. That's just atrocious all around. And I love orcs, because orcs' special power is, if they believe something hard enough, it becomes true. There is there is a race in D&D &D like that. I can't remember what they're called, but they're like frog monsters or something. Where if, if enough of them worship something, it will come to life as a god. And it's... it's... No, it's like in the Warhammer lore, orcs believe that painting things red makes them faster, so it does. They believe the color blue is lucky. So it is. They believe the color purple is stealthy. So it is. Is that why you have to paint the figurines? Have you ever seen a purple orc? I mean, I haven't. <laughs> yeah, because they're stealthy. I. It's it's why the human ultramarines are the luckiest uh, marines because they wear blue armor. I cannot argue with any of that though. That's the thing. Like. I want to be able to argue they, against that. They don't understand that they have this power. If they understood how this power worked and, it, and that it's something they did, they would be the strongest race. But they're all idiots. They don't realize they have this power. <laughs> yeah, that one's familiar. Yeah, I think I was actually talking to Chris yesterday about... Uh, we, were, we were reading through all my actually questions, and we got a follow-up question, and I like went over like... A bunch of the vaults and the shitty things they did because the question said like the vaults all failed due to poor planning and poor money management but that was not the case so like you're familiar that they're all they're all social experiments yeah yeah i don't i, I don't remember by numbers which ones are which but i know there are a couple fake well which was the puppet one i don't remember but the that was the one they locked a the guy by himself with a box full of puppets yeah, only good things could come of that, right? <laughs> That's oh, yeah, not, he probably went absolutely insane. Not a horror movie in the making or anything. My favorite is still um, the one that was full of Gary clones. Yeah. <laughs> and all, all they would do is yell Gary as they attacked you. Oh, man. I love it. That's very, very specific. Yeah, and you said you uh, pre-ordered the the uh, magic set that's the the Fallout Magic crossover set that's going to. Yeah, I went I went to a local shop here because I figured they'd be cheaper here than in Chicago. Yeah. And pre-order all four decks, so I'm going to have all four of the pre-con decks. Nice, nice. So if you guys want to get together on Saturday and play some, learn how to play some Commander. I I should I should I I, I have been saying for Which a while I wanted to learn Commander. Because the plan is, uh, I'm going to that card shop on Friday, because on Friday night is when they have, like, hey, we we have tables open, come and play Magic. I dig. So I dig. if you are, you're, walk, you're welcome to join us, we can each pick one of the decks, sleeve them up, and, and learn how to play with all pre-cons, because that's probably the best way to teach, is with decks all on the same power level. Friday, I'm probably going to do music, but I'd absolutely be down for Saturday for that. Um yeah. But yeah. If nothing else, I can just come by and just teach you how Commander works. It's it's and pretty self-explanatory. You have a le legendary creature that's like the, the king of your deck. 
okay. in a 99 card deck that, except for basic lands or cards that specifically say so otherwise, can't have duplicates. Okay. Okay. So it's a Highlander deck. Because it was originally called Elder Dragon Highlander. I get you. I get you. I you know, the original you. commander had to be an Elder Dragon. There was like five you could pick from. But the rules have changed a lot since then. And they just broke it out to pretty... And, and, any legendary. Any legendary, legendary creature can be your commander. Uh, there are a few exceptions. Uh, but it usually says right on the card. Like there's some Planeswalkers that can be your commander. Uh, and there's cards that have something called Partner. If you have a, two creatures that have partner, you can have two commanders. Ooh. That's wild. Merry and Pippin, Lord of the Rings deck, was partners. Oh, okay. Well, it's it's a little too perfect for them, though. I mean, I get that. I get that. You'd, you'd have yeah. to. You'd have and to. Then what, and when they did the uh, the uh, Stranger Things uh, secret layer, there were some that had, it was called Best Friends, so they could only be partnered with a specific person. <laughs> Hey, I have a legendary creature. I have a, I have a, I have a horse. I have, I have Shadowfax. Oh yeah, Shadowfax is pretty cool. I also have the... because Shadowfax defines the keyword haste on the car. Yes, yes, which is good because I don't know what it's all the new flavor, abilities flavor are. Flavor wise, Shadowfax shows you the meaning of haste. <laughs> Haste has been a keyword long enough they normally don't print it on cards anymore. Right, right. I, I, I do need to like make sure I've got my glossary available though. I'm old. I I I fell out way back at like Ice Age. So I stopped playing in like late two thousands. Yeah. Yeah. Oh the magic shop I go to most of the time has a sealed box of Ice Age starter decks. Oh man. Oh man! They want fifteen hundred dollars for it. I can understand. I I don't know that I would be willing to. Yeah. <laughs> I know that cap. I know that cap. It's a good card. It is. It is. Get, that's the. Is that the one you get to search your opponent's library and exile cards out of it? I'm I'm pretty sure. Yeah, Jester's cap. Because that was, that was yeah. one of the ones they always ran with, like the old mill combos. Sacrifice yeah, cap to look through card. the target player's library, remove any three of those cards from the game, reshuffle the library afterwards. Yeah. Yeah, so you just, like, I'm going to look through your deck and take your combo pieces and just throw them away. Hope you didn't want to play that, because guess what? You ain't going to be allowed to. I have one of those. Mine's not in that good condition, though. Soul rings? Yeah. Yeah, like a... These are... Soul ring. Yeah, they're 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 grungy because they were well used, but yeah, the old soul rings, those ones go for about twenty bucks. They've reprinted soul rings so many times that it's not really like a highly sought after card, and I think it's banned in modern anyway. Man, I I I found those behind a picture. They were inside of a photo frame. And we accidentally dropped it, and the back popped off. And in between the photo and the cardboard backing, there was three magic cards. And two of them were soul rings. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, it's a staple card in Commander. Crazy stuff. Good stuff, but crazy stuff, man. I I I miss the game. I'm 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 not gonna lie. My crowning achievement was I threw a. 2800 power hamster at somebody. <laughs> we, uh, careful. what do you do about that? But Fuzzy and I played a, a game once where I had rats and enchantments. No, it wasn't rats. It was, it was the org. Wasn't it? I don't know. I had some creature that had just a pile of enchantments on it, but I only had one creature. But I couldn't get through you because Voltron. yeah, there was there was a, a a a huge line of defensive wall, and uh, yeah, then I found a random jump in a oh, yeah, black I'm red sorry. deck, a black red deck, and I had one blue jump in there, and uh, yeah, I didn't even have any blue mana. I lucked out that there was a rainbow veil in play. 
and that's one of like three games I've ever won in my life. <laughs> I, I, I remember you telling me this story many years ago. Yeah, it was my rainbow jump jail. randomly got shuffled into your Rakdos deck. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's amazing. Yeah, in a in a two player format, that's perfectly legal. If you're running uh, like City of Brass, you can just put random off colored cards in there. Commander, you're not allowed to do that. Yeah. I don't know. I gotta play Popper now because I'm poor. <laughs> uh, one of the new Popper decks is from a new card that came out. It's called Slimes Against Humanity. Hmm. It's a three mana sorcery. You create a, sl a zero zero slime and put one one counters on it based on how many slimes against humanity are in your graveyard or in exile. And there's no limit on how many you can run in your deck. So you run like 20 slimes, 20 counter spells, and green blue yikes it, it, dangerous so that's strategy that's a that's a popper deck that's looked like it was pretty pretty good because it's one of those things when you have oh yeah the slimes have trampled too so they're really good oh nice nice just kind of spread a, the uh, damage around a little bit yeah, because I was looking at that, too, for a commander deck, and there's a commander that says whenever you create a token creature, you can have it come into play as a copy of any creature on the battlefield. Ooh. That could go So handy. I can play the Slimes Against Humanity spell. It creates a slime token. Instead of making a slime, I can copy any other creature instead. I'm down with it. I am down with that. Yeah. But I need to buy 30 or 40 Slimes Against Humanity, and they're going for about 4 bucks each right now. Yeah. For a common. Yeah, that's... Well, it turns out everyone who wants to make a deck needs 20 or 30 of them. That weird... That has, like, the feeling of forced scarcity to it. I don't I don't know what I think about that. I'm not I'm not sure what to make of it. Uh, it happened with the Nazgul's, because you were allowed to run nine of them in your deck. That's true, you were. That is true. Yeah, so and they printed it with nine different arts. So people out there were trying to get nine, one of each art. Yeah. <laughs> what's your what's your stance on like the, the the art cards, like the secret layer drops and stuff? Are there any that you're particularly Me? fond of or uh, I need to get a rainbow dash. Yes. Because I actually want to make a rainbow dash deck. No, I I, but, I dig that. Not not for any like reasons because like, you know, my Little Pony, whatever. Mechanically, I like the way the, way the card works. Where's, what, where's my uh, Scryfall window? Let me bring it up here and share it. Uh, it's, uh, it's Boros. It's red, white, one. And it's like a 2-2. Two, two. Yeah. And then anytime you attack with a creature that has haste or flying, you get 20% cool. And when you're at 100%, you can add Wooberg and draw a card. That, that's so cool. Yeah, so in red white, haste and token creatures are a big thing. So I could easily see getting a hundred percent every turn. <laughs> Man, like try imagining the strategy to like Yeah, I could I could see this being way overpowered. Yeah. The problem is, though, is it's considered an uncard because it's silver bordered, so you'd have to rule zero that in the play. Let tell people like, like basically in a casual game, most people probably won't care. Yeah, and it's also it looks like it's going for about sixty bucks because that was a secret layer from a while ago. No, I did not know. I, I should, I should be looking for the artist here if I'm looking for Scryfall. I'm 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 looking for the Junji Ito cards. I, I love the art. Where is it here? Format set criteria. Artist. There we go. I oh, love those, the art yeah, on these. Those... Yeah, some of the black and white cards look pretty sweet. Yeah. And I mean, I'm 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 into his style in the first place. Yeah, when I, also, when I found out there was a Baldur's Gate set, I lost my mind, and I bought, like, four booster boxes of it. <laughs> As you might know, I've been playing Baldur's Gate since the 90s. Yeah, like, since it was just Baldur's Gate, not... Yeah. 
Yeah, it's one of those things where I really would love to see, like, if they let Larry and do it, remake one and two using the three engine. I would play the shit out of those. Oh, in a heartbeat. In a heartbeat. I feel that. Yeah, because it's like a lot of people who played three never played one and two. So the, a lot of people didn't understand how excited I was to see Minsk and Jahira. <laughs> like, it all ties together. And it goes back to Fallout, because that's like that as well, you know? The, the lore is there because they've had a series of games to go through. And, and they've built on each other from that. Yeah, it's one of those things, though, where, uh, like, the isometric uh, combat style of 1 and 2 just doesn't do well today, even though that's what I grew up with and would, would rather prefer. Yeah. Both get kind of disproved. My, what I just said, though, because it was the same kind of, like, turn-based combat style. And apparently people are still into it, but for some reason, for fault, they won't do it. And that makes me sad. Yeah. I don't know. My 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 guilty lore pleasure uh, was probably Five Nights at Freddy's. I should be careful admitting that out loud, but I, I did a lot of theory chasing and theory crafting and Matt Pat worshipping for a hot minute there. Uh, the lore in that is pretty insane. I didn't see the movie. I have not which yet. It was way better than it had any right to be. Yeah, if you didn't see it, it's actually a decent movie. I it 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 is on my list. It is on my list to catch up with. I did, however, read the books. The movie's more psychological than horror, I think. Yeah. That's 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 what I've heard a lot. And uh I I did have it extremely highly recommended to me. Oh yeah, no. I think I I saw it not expecting nothing and was pleasantly surprised. I had no expectations, and it met every one of them. <laughs> exactly. But uh, yeah. I the thing is the thing is I was an ardent Matt Pat follower and believer for a very long time, and at some point around. I want to say security breach. He started to go off the rails. Like, I, I, I wasn't sure I could agree with his interpretations anymore. Uh, and that's when I started branching out to, like, watch a few other theorists and, and get involved in all of that. And that pet's in the Five Night at Friday's movie for, like, five seconds. I heard. I heard. Like, I, yeah, I gotta, he's, a, he's a cameo. Please, please tell me he says the thing. He does say the thing. Okay, he does say the thing. Good, good. He does say the thing. Buzzy, I think bring him out to set. Oh, there you go. Uh Sorry. Bring him out to set. Say the thing. Okay, you can go home now. Up and at them. (laughs) I didn't do it. I didn't do it. Woozle wuzzle. But, uh,. Have you ever whimmy wham whammed when you should have wham wham wazzled? <laughs> Wumbo? Wumbo? Buzzy mentioned something on, on his stream the other day about Placid Plastic Duck Simulator being on oh, sale. Jesus. And I said, okay, it's two bucks. Let me buy you a game on Steam. I have two bucks. I lied. I didn't actually have the two bucks, but I bought the game anyway. The point is, the point is, it is not it is not what I expected it to be. I did not get it for myself, but after hearing about it, it is not at all what I anticipated for a two dollar game. I didn't know this game existed until just now. And overwhelmingly positive, twelve thousand reviews. Okay, so here's the thing. I think what it started out as is just a dumb little idling physics simulator or something. And you wait and ducks bar fills up, duck spawns, bar fills up, duck spawn, lots of different ducks. They have cute little, they have interactions between them. There's been a couple expansions. There are only a couple bucks. It goes on sale. The thing is, there's a story there and it's like, an in, in in-depth like 
arg like puzzle of finding like different things. It's not just uh, an story either. It's not just here are the ducks. Why are the ducks here? Oh, because we wanted to watch the ducks float. No, this is some espionage level bullshit here. There's hidden secrets in different levels, and if ducks fly out of, there's like random events that happen that trigger other things. And then you go over here and you read this thing and you get the code there and you go back to a different map and rename one of your ducks to this thing. And then it gives you a code and that's part of the code to open the secret door. And then based on the noise that one of the ducks make when it clicks, it teaches you to go over the radio and you tune it to a station and there's like Morse code happening that tells you the decodes to a name to name a different duck that gives you the other half of the door code. And inside the secret door, there's weird shit that doesn't come along until the third expansion comes out. And then like you have to like do all this weird in-depth stuff that is not just watching ducks spawn and move around aimlessly that you have no control over. Yeah. It's like you're operating the environment. You get the name of the Patriots. Man. Like this sounds like uh, like like uh, Metal Gear Solid levels of bullshit. No, absolutely it is. It is it is Kojima's idol game, basically. <laughs> it the community on both the Steam community hub and stuff and also apparently they have a very active discord which i do not want to join it's <laughs> it's it's five nights freddy's level of just 12 year old nut jobs uh, punch, basically, punching basically. in phone numbers to every small tiles on the wall yeah yes but there's like a bunch of different achievements that involve doing some weird things or waiting for, for very specific things to happen some of the ducks make fire. There's things that can be lit on fire, and if they happen to light them on fire, different things happen. Some of the ducks make fire? There's a dragon duck. It breathes fire. There's a birthday duck with a sparkler. It is also, also produces fire. There's ducks that are flammable. If a fire duck, if a fire producing duck touches the other one, it is now on fire. I feel like I should be going to buy this game for me right now. <laughs> I already bought it. <laughs> I bought it and installed it in the last 10 minutes. It has multiplayer. Oh, man. On okay. The, on yeah, the original I, uh... map, not, not the two expansions, on the original map, you can start a multiplayer room, and it's all three of you actively watching the ducks. Yeah, I think I yeah. need to do this. It's so dumb, but it's like... Sometimes I'll just start... Get... Wait for the expansions to go on sale to save a couple bucks on them, but do pick up the expansions. They add whole new, whole new massive sets of things that you can optionally add when you start a map. You're like, no, I just, I only want the ducks from the second expansion because they randomly get generated. And if you're waiting for interactions with certain ones, one of the achievements, and it's the last one I have, there's a piggy bank duck. It has a coin in its back in that same expansion. There's a thief duck. If the thief duck bumps into the piggy bank duck, it takes the coin out. It is now holding the coin. Then once you have the thief with the coin, if it bumps into the arcade duck, it puts it in the machine and the, the arcade machine duck becomes an activatable thing that loads a whole little mini game that you can do. And it's the first time you can actively control a duck and you get an achievement for it. But you have to wait for these randomly generated, free-moving, non-controllable objects to bump into each other to happen. This heralds an entirely new generation of idle games where you're not just waiting for bars to fill up. Yes, it's an idle physics simulator. Yeah. Because it's and it's not just in the pool. The fir the first the the original map, the 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 pool with the slide. There's two in there's an inflatable flamingo and inflatable u unicorn I think it is sitting outside the pool. But they're not static objects. They are physics objects. Randomly, at, there's a day-night cycle. Randomly, a storm will come in and blow things around. Occasionally, they can get blown into the pool. And they interact with your ducks. There's a couple ducks that have pointy things. There's a unicorn one. One's got a knife. There's a night duck with a lance. There's, there's a number of pointy objects that can deflate it. 
there's an achievement for getting one of them in the pool and it being deflated. Nice. You just have to wait. Okay, okay. You see, and I thought I thought I was having fun playing Helldivers. This sounds like a bomb. <laughs> Helldivers is a game you can control, though, and it looks amazing. And I have yet to hear anyone uh, issue a complaint about it. My only complaint was uh, it was unplayable for the first few days because the servers were not prepared for the traffic. Why is no live service game ever prepared for the amount of people that are going to play their fucking game. Because Helldivers wanted to get 40,000 people. They were not expecting half a million people to buy their game. Also because scalability it can be expensive, and they, like, when they are released like that, like, large companies are like, oh, what's the ROI on uh, actually setting up these servers for, you know, when it opens? How many people are we realistically expecting? Because we don't want to overspend on that. And I, I figure that's most of what it is. It's one of those things where now they're preparing the server for the amount of people they're playing. Yeah. The numbers are going to fall off eventually, and then they're going to have wasted server space. They'll be able so to dial it back from there, of, though. Yeah. But they're trying to have that perfect number of we don't want to spend too much money, but we don't want to piss off too many people. Yeah. And... When you are a large publicly traded company or something, there's a whole lot of like. It reminds me of the scene in Fight Club where he's talking about the cost of recalls for automobiles and like yeah. how many deaths gets too expensive. It's like, how many people can we afford to piss off and not take a significant profit hit? And like that calculation just makes me feel icky in general. Well, it's because of the thing where a publicly traded company, every decision must be optimized for profits. Yeah. If you make any business decisions that aren't optimized for profits, your shareholders can sue you. Yeah. Yep. And that frustrates me to, to no that end. Is that frustrating. Frustrating. It's which is why it's one of those things where I like when companies don't go public, but I get why they do because they can make a shitload of money. The initial offering makes them a ton of money. Yeah, yeah, it does, but at, at what cost is your conscience, you know? Yeah, yeah that's what it is. Late-stage late capitalism be like. We are in post-late-stage capitalism. Yeah, this is... Even later? Yes, this is, this is uh, the end time. Late, 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 late-stage capitalism? We are post-apocalyptic. Our current civilization should have collapsed by now. Yeah. It's being held together by uh, thumbtacks and hope. Pretty much. Pretty much. We're running low on hope. Good thing we got plenty of thumbtacks. <laughs> we got plenty of thumbtacks. That's why I don't want to take Virgo public. Not that we are even close to anywhere where that could be a concern, but ain't never going to happen. It's a side project. It's not like you want to dedicate 100% of your time to it. Well, well, I mean, if it were a viable option. That's fair. If it became a commercially successful company, then you would have the problem of, do I go public or not? No. no. I, no, would, no. I would take public the happens. smaller amount... Yeah, public just means we we would take investment far before we would take it public. Yeah, there's a big difference in that. I've been through both halves of that twice. Like it is, it is a very very logically there may come in time after filing we would take funding. Sort of, maybe not, not not shares of thing, but maybe angel investing some some valuation, you know, et cetera, et cetera. But that would be that's way down the road. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like that's after filing and after issuing shares and after all that, and that's like it is an actual, not even just a business. That is a. There's a different level of business, not just. Oh, hey, it's an actual business. It has a name. It, it, yeah, there's a whole. That's a whole different tech tree of bullshit to deal <laughs> with. 
I haven't even specked into that tree at all. That's that's another thing that bothers me about it is like to become an actual business. It feels to me, and I could be wrong. Maybe it is just me. Maybe I got problems. Like there's a high barrier of entry. Are you an LLC or an S corp? I want to operate as a, as a workers collective. That's, that's the dream, you know, what's, what's that term? Like a, like a co-op. There's a, there's a term. Martin from winter garden was talking about setting up his business. Like there's like a self, it, it was it was one of those bullshit things that came up around the time of like NFTs and it was like it's like a self regulating entity or government or something where it's like sort of like a hive mind but it's like a floating council that actually makes the decision there's no one like it's a oh, decentralized DSO I I don't know but I have to look into decentralized it. something organization i don't i don't remember i'll, I'll yeah, so i can fi- i can find it well no it was it's specifically like it's like a it's like a company but without a head it's like a company without it's basically how like a commune or a co-op you know like like in the 70s effectively works. instead of one person making all the decisions yeah right but that board is like always a free floating group it's not like like a, a, a ruling council or anything. It's just like, Hey, we need to make a decision. We immediately form the, the people most knowledgeable. They all vote on it. And then they disband. It's like they become, it's like the Borg. They elect a leader when they need one. And then when they don't, they don't. I could get with something like that. I could get with something like that for sure. But, uh, yeah, our our current structure is we don't actually exist on paper. We have some like emergency just in case documentation, but I really need to formalize some of that stuff at some point just to enable us to track financial hoopla under that name instead of under my name. DAO. DAO. Decentralized Autonomous Organization. DAO Schwartz. <laughs> I think I think I have slain Diet Mr. Pib. No, because now I'm thinking DAO Speedwagon. <laughs> no, you're, you're horrible. Okay, my turn to be no. dead. Um, but yeah, it, it came up during all the NFTs because it uses it uses blockchain technology to do all the bookkeeping and record keeping because there is no one like there's no finance, you know, part of the org. It is collectively. So decisions and, and things operate on a, your own private blockchain. So all events are recorded for everybody to see, which is, it's not how you can have a business without like a CEO, basically. I can dig that. I, I sent you like read it later, but basically it's, it's yeah it's it's a thing i don't know if they like they stuck around after you know web 3.0 kind of fell apart but worth looking it, into it, worth looking it into. came from that era basically neat looking stuff i've never ran a business i have nothing to add I, I I haven't either, even though I have. <laughs> I, I can't call anything I do a business with any air of legitimacy. Oh, man. And to take it back 600 years, the game I know too, too much about is the Halo universe, because I also massively played those games. A lot of those games... I read a lot of the early books that were canon that were the things 
immediately immediately before Halo 1 and immediately after Halo 1, before Halo 2. They were like the shit that happened in between the games is when all the books took place. Yeah. And so that's why when um, Reach came out, which ends up leading right up into the events of Halo 1, because the end of Halo Reach is you get the package and you're trying to get it to the ship and it is the Pillar of Autumn that is noping out in a random direction to get away from all the kerfuffle that is happening and that is literally where halo one starts as they are noping out to a random place they're like oh shit oh shit oh shit we're on fire where the fuck are we we just evac'd out and that's why halo one just starts like that it is just literally up until uh that but it took it explains what happens there and like the coal protocol where you don't ever directly go to earth because they can, the enemy knows how to hyperspace better than we do. So when we go zoom, they can like protractor and see where you zoom to because they know how to like math and see where you went. So there's a whole book called The Cold Protocol. It's never actually go to Earth, go tangential to it and then get, like, you know, don't like, oh, we need to go home, like go somewhere else and then go home. It's like setting the home address in your GPS to the local Walmart. So when someone steals your car, they don't know where you live. Yes. Yo. <laughs> I never thought about that. And... That's. Well, that's if you have GPS like baked into your car. If it goes through your phone or something, it doesn't really. But yeah, if you have, you know, built in or Garmin or something or other. Yeah. Like a balloon or something bad happens. <laughs> I played Halo 3 and Halo Wars. Those are the only two Halo games I've ever played. Oh, I have... I have not actually... I have... I barely started Infinity, and I didn't actually finish it because it was such a hot mess when it first came out. I'm just like, I never I'll wait. It. I'll wait. When I heard it was open world, I'm like, ah, I'm, not, I'm not down with that. It's kind of destined... When you actually get... When you actually get into the open part, there's a whole tutorial mission, but it's all like part of the story in the beginning. When you actually get into the open area, it is kind of, well, you can go anywhere and start, you know, all these bases and places have shit going on. You need to go do them, but some are a lot harder. So don't go there. Some are a lot farther. Maybe not go there till you unlock planes. Or otherwise you're going to be walking for six fucking hours. Yeah, but it's, it was broken in the beginning. And then they made the decision to split the the co-op or split the campaign from the multiplayer. And the multiplayer is free and the campaign isn't, but it's a whole separate application and a whole separate download. It's not, I load the game and it's a thing. Welcome, Aunt BJ. Thank, Thank you for you. joining us. We're gonna get you to be on one of these one of these days. We somehow. absolutely are. Oh, that would be lovely. <laughs> I haven't spoken to BJ in a long time, and uh, she, she's a, a classy lady. I gotta say. Are you gonna be around on Monday? I'm not sure how long you're gonna be in town, but if you're here on Monday, you should come over for dinner. Uh, I was planning on leaving on Sunday, but I have no real reason to not stay an extra day. If you end up here on Monday, come over for dinner. Come hang out with us. Yeah, I should. We do a we do a, a family dinner night on Mondays, and BJ's often, almost always here with us. We missed you this past yeah. Monday. <laughs> well, B, BJ is family to you. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. But so much to the point that I have no interest in playing Halo Infinite. I found while cleaning three twenty five dollar Xbox gift cards that I probably got from. I probably bought a four pack at like Costco and meant to give them away and then only gave one of them away. And then like, Oh, I should, I could go buy Halo infinite, like the campaign thing, or I could get a year of game pass or something. And I haven't yet. That's how little I have interest in playing that or any of the other stuff. Have well, you I have game pass? It's actually worth it. Yeah. I've, I've heard that. Yeah. I will also be, I will also be back in a minute. All right. Okay. All right. We will be here. We'll hold down the fort for you. I still want an Xbox One, but I specifically want it to make games for it. 
I, I just want another game on a physical console. And Xbox has the lowest barrier of entry. There's... Is it specifically an Xbox you want? Or... I'm, I'm not quite sure I follow your question. What's that or? Why an Xbox and not a PlayStation? Uh, easiest system, easiest actual console to write games for. Release, release games for. Let me, let me clarify that. Okay. Okay. That, well, that's what I'm saying is all three of them. You can write homebrew stuff pretty easily, especially on the switch. Getting the Xbox is the only one that ever possibly has a good path of, uh, actually getting things published on it. Right. You don't have to join right, get, some... Get old... Go ahead. I was going to say, getting old sucks. It does. It does. But I mean, I, I'm still going to say that it beats the alternatives. But yeah, Xbox has Very like the player. minimal friction for releasing a game on the system in a legitimate pathway. I could write something for anything. Crafty writes stuff for the Switch all the time. But he can't put it on NSO or anything like that. With the Xbox, you fill out their form. There's some token amount of join the developer program, but you're not talking thousands of dollars a year or anything. It's, no. it's join the developer program. Okay, you're a developer. Once your app gets approved, you're good to go. But that's not a closed program. It's an open program. I applied for the Nintendo developer program, but I was too late because they just shut down all the ones that were easy to get into, like DSiWare and stuff, which I'm kind of bummed about, but so it goes. Um, I don't know the details on the PlayStation Store, uh, but the fact that I don't know the details tells me a little bit about them in that there's going to well, be some additional level of friction there. If your goal is to actually release stuff on them, yeah. then yes, Xbox. If it was other things, I mean, they're basically, I mean, even the newer, the newer Xboxes, the, the X and the S are basically PCs at this point. They are basically standard. There's no weird hardware in them. They are, a, a time lock slice moment of computer technology that they managed to package into a box. <laughs> well, not only that, yeah, but I, I have experience with it because I know you can write stuff using mono game, which is the open source continuation of XNA, which I've released a 360 mm. game with. So. Yeah. I was thinking that like a game console at this point is just a, a PC optimized for gaming. Yeah. That's kind of what it is. They they are. 100% oh, no. they are. It is literally a PC. Yeah. The Xbox is literally a PC. The Xbox and the 5 are literally PCs. They use normal standard CPUs now. There's no like weird cross memory cell There's architecture no cell bullshit anymore. Hey, for the games that actually took advantage of that, it was that amazing. Was <laughs> but it was... It was just a fairly hard architecture to program for. Yeah. I don't know. I just like writing games, and I feel it gives an air of legitimacy if we have one released on a console. I don't... I, I you mean... Write, I, you, write your entire game in assembly. I, 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 That is possible, yes. That is a thing that could be done. <laughs> Panda Bowling Tycoon? I could also eat fistfuls of ground glass, but I'm not, not looking forward to that if I can avoid it. I like moving fast. I like being able to bash out a prototype in like four hours, you know? Well, let me ask you this. Why? Why do you not consider the PC a valid distribution thing? I, what fundamentally is there? What fundamentally is there different between, oh, we're legitimate because we released on an Xbox versus we released on Steam? In my mind, and I will fully admit this, this is purely me being crazy. 
if you release on a dedicated piece of hardware for gaming, it grants you tangible evidence that you make games, and making games is what you do. By that, by that logic, why not release it on an iPhone or an, or Android or a, release it on a on a on a phone? Period. Okay, well that's on my list as well. Yes, but there's no by that definition, there's no difference. Then I published, I made a thing, and I published on an app store, not the app store, and it is a legitimate thing that other people can go. And I've paid money to be a listed developer, and people can other people can go and buy it. Yes. By that definition, Steam or Epic or what, whoever, it's the same thing. Yes. I, I would also very much like to have a game out on Steam. And that would give me a very similar feeling. But the key, the key point in your argument is you say, by that logic. But I preempted all this by saying I'm crazy. This is not logical. There is no logic in the fact that I will feel like a real boy if I release on a console. I is have released, released on a console. Is it because you released I in, your game on Xbox? Yeah. Into a walled garden. Is that the goal? <laughs> is it, it's not just a thing? There's something magical in my mind tied to the dedicated hardware. There, it, it, it is I, not a I, logical I position. I, I will say that. I understand that what you're saying, though, is that you want to release on something dedicated as a gaming machine. Yes. I want my game on uh, the point, Nintendo. Though, just dump a bunch of games on Steam, get a bunch of feedback, and use that to make a better game, and then release then try to release that on console. If by better you mean another, then yes, I agree. To take it back a few... A reference to earlier, you were talking about Five Nights at Freddy's. The same guy that put that out, you know what other game he made the same year he put out Five Nights at Freddy's? Fart Hotel. Yes. He made Fart Hotel. He made a bunch of dumb games and was just cranking them out to get practice and experience, and he put them out on whatever platform would take him. Yeah. And one of them happened to become viral. Yeah. You don't spend your time make polishing your golden turd for 16 years to release your, your movie. You make a bunch <laughs> of dumb YouTube videos and get them out. Polishing the golden turd would have been so much better a title for this show. <laughs> no, and I, got a mere shine. I will say that I'm doing that. I am making and releasing things. And yeah. I need to be more mindful about my distribution if I want to grow my distribution. And if I ever want to monetize, God forbid, I should figure that out. But I'm going to continue making games. I just want the satisfaction of another one on a machine. Yeah. Well, I'm saying... It reminds me, strangely, of uh, when uh, Left 4 Dead came out. Because I remember you were making that game. And yeah. And you were like, well, Valve made my game better than I could ever make it. Yeah. And, and I hung it up for a while after that. What was the zombies in tech game you were making? Uh, was that the future verse fantasy one? Or... Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I, I, I went through a phase where, where zombie. I, I was ahead of the curve trying to make a zombie survival game. And I was very much over my head in trying to build it. But conceptually, I had it pretty well mapped. Have you played Project Zomboid? I have not. Uh, I think you would enjoy it because of how meticulous the game is. I will have if to you break a window and jump through it without cleaning the glass off. You'll slice your hands up and start bleeding. That is absurd and perfect, and I love it. If you walk in the grass with no shoes on, you'll get cuts on your feet. That that's almost too much, and I admire it yeah. for that. It's one of those things where graphics weren't the top priority. It was the realism. And yeah. it's kind of things like if you're wearing too much clothes in the summer, you'll start to overheat and you got to drink more water. 
Drinking right, more you eat too water. Much food, you get fat and can't climb fences anymore. <laughs> oh, look at me. Yeah. I've also and then, like, like if you're fighting zombies with an, with an axe, eventually you will get tired and you will not be able to swing that axe anymore and you will not be able to run. Nice. Nice. Yeah, so it's one of those things where it's like the first time I played it, a friend of mine told me, go watch some YouTube videos. Do not go into this game blind. You will not have a good time. <laughs> and then the tutorial trolls you, which is fun. Okay, okay. Elaborate. Go ahead and spoil it. Uh, so in the tutorial, it starts like, you know, here's how you climb fences. Here's how you equip gear. Here's how you use a weapon. And then at one point, it has you open uh, an outhouse, and a zombie pops up and bites you. It says, oh no, you're bit. Press Z to apply the cure. Z is shout to get zombies' attention. So you press Z to apply the cure, and your character just shouts, hey, over here. And then 300 zombies come from all directions around you. And that's how the tutorial ends. That's awful. <laughs> that's horrible. I love it. It's to teach you that your characters will die. Do not get attached to them. Because I had in one night, in an hour, I had three characters die. Damn. And they were all for dumb things. One of them, I got hit by a car because someone uh, didn't realize I was standing in the middle of the road and drove by because we were playing in a multiplayer server. Uh, one game, I created a new character, ran over. I'm like, oh, that zombie's got a backpack. I went to kill him. The zombie bit me in the groin. So Ow. I got infected. Yeah, and it's, if it's a bite, you get infected, and you will, within, like, three days, turn into a zombie. Or if you die naturally before that, you come back as a zombie. Horrifying, man. Yeah. Cool, but horrifying. Yeah, so I kept dying. I kept making new characters and kept dying instantly. Wild, wild. Uh, I think we're going to take a... Where short little ad break here for a couple minutes and get some water. I'll let you finish your thought. It's gone. <laughs> Alrighty. Uh, I think this would be a good time to take a couple minute break, uh, go top off the waters, change out the tanks and everything else. Uh, we will be back in about five. And in the meanwhile, enjoy yourselves some stray light music. Catch you guys in a minute.
Okay, there. I, ca I counted us back in. Welcome back, everybody. We hope you had a chance to get up, stretch, grab yourself a drink. Uh, I know I said we wanted to talk about mental health tonight, and uh, Diet Mr. Pib here has... <laughs> you have the Tim Misney shirt. Um, oh, man. Chris reminded me of that when he put his eye up to the screen. Okay. We were... We were he, for disclosure, Diet Mr. Pib is in my living room about 20 feet that way. Right before we started, I had run to go get some McDonald's, and we were talking about on the billboard, a, they're a semi-local celebrity, Tim Misney, has a slug in, I'll make them pay. And we were talking about, there's a billboard near here that's like, it just says, I'm Tim Misney, you know what I'll do. That's all it says. And we were talking about that, and he's like, you mean this guy? And he pulls up his thing, and he's got a <laughs> Tim Misney shirt on. It's just like, have you out seen of nowhere, I just brought that up. Have you seen the billboard that's just his eyes with the eyebrow thing and there's no, no. text on it at all? No. I've seen that one. My first, that, that's what My first exposure to him was was Tim Misney, I'll make them pay. But you know, the, the first thing that I noticed when I saw that billboard is there was no phone number. There was no contact information. Just I'm a lawyer, my name is Tim Misney, and I know his name because of that billboard. I have no idea how to get in touch with him, but if I search for him, I'm sure I could find him. Oh, that's how it came up. We were his office once. Nice. We were talking about um, Coke versus Diet Coke versus Coke and Pepsi and all that, and we're like, when's the, like? There's no reason for Pepsi or Coke to advertise Pepsi or Coke. If you got got some new thing, sure, tell us about that. But Everybody knows what Pepsi is and everybody knows what Coke is. You don't have to advertise that your regular classic Pepsi that hasn't changed in a million years. You have, don't have to advertise about that. And that's how we were talking about like, oh, just people who like, why do they address? Oh, to get you get that into your thought. The next time you're like, which one to make? Oh, well, I've last saw a Pepsi advertise. I'll get that one. And that's why, oh, oh, I need a lawyer. Well, I know, I know who makes them pay because I just saw a billboard about that. Like, I know that it's getting you. It's keeping it in the top of your, your brain stack is what it is. What I, what I was saying was, when's the last time you've seen an advertisement for root beer? A and W, and it's the only one, but they act they actively promote because you know. I can't think yeah, of like it. Like I haven't seen an advertisement for dads or bar's root beer in tw probably twenty years. Yeah. I don't know if I can think of the last time I saw root beer advertisement. It's root beer. It hasn't changed in 200 years. Right, right. I mean, Dr. Pepper kind of did some for a minute there, but that's not root beer, which is kind of makes it beside the point. Oh, which reminds me, I, I do have my root beer story. Ooh. Roommate one day went out, and she was at the store, and she saw these root beers, and they said local on them. Like, oh. A local root beer brewery. I'll buy them. We get home and like look at them. Like these are only sixty calories a bottle. That says low calorie, oh. not local. <laughs> it was L O hyphen C A L. Not from Lower California. Like, yeah, these are low calorie root beers, not local root beers. I, I, I... <laughs> We're good. I just, I just found that funny. Flash topic. What's your favorite brand of root beer? Um, ICB. I'm I'm an A and W guy all the way, hundred percent. It's also the only good diet root beer I've had, and their cream soda's not I... bad either. I can't think of the last time I had a diet root beer. The the A and W ones are good. They're worth trying, especially if you have to cut out sugar for other reasons. A and W does it right. I remember one time I had a diet Mountain Dew, and uh, it ruined my week. I am so used to them now that I can't drink the regular ones. They don't taste right to me anymore. I didn't like the way regular Mountain Dew tastes. I don't know why I thought I'd like a Diet Mountain Dew. Okay, well, in that case, yeah, no, that makes sense. 
I don't know, man. Do I ever really like was Livewire? I I do like me some Baja Blast. Next week. I can't say I'm a big fan of it, but I just they don't they didn't make diets. I never tried it. I I will have to look because I think I have the recording still of when we mixed every Mountain Dew flavor together. If I if I still have that footage, I will have to put it up somewhere. I'll throw a link in the Discord. Do you Discord. have the footage of uh, Pop Tarts Con Queso? I do. I do have the footage of Pop Tarts Con Queso. You know what? I'm I'm putting that put that on our agenda, Mister Note Taker. That this week, as a, a special bonus bonus for our fans, I'm going to put up some YouTube videos and throw links in the Discord of crazy adventures with Diet Mister Pib in the past. Uh, I have the video of the time that Brett threw an apple at me. And, and the the pan on the head and everything? Yes. <laughs> yes. And he just whipped it at me instead. That was They that were was throwing vicious. it at my head and then he turned it last second and threw it at him. Yeah, I just hit me in the side. And you're uh, welcome. Happy uh, happy I mean, Wednesday. I miss, I miss him though. Yeah, same. Same. He went and got up. married and had children and, and, and did all of that bullshit. More power and too, twins. Man. More power and too. twins. Oh, twins? His, he, when he, he had the first kid, the, the girl, and then they got pregnant again and it ended up being twins. Of, mm. of all the people that have twins. And he's just like, oh my God, it's <laughs> so much. I went from one kid directly to three. Yeah, yeah, that is, that is quite a bit. Quite a bit. We're talking about Brett. Yeah. You remember Brett. I know you remember Brett. Yes, Brett and Steve did overlap. Yeah. It it was it was Matt and three Matt Matt and Jeff that didn't overlap. It, it was a mass situation. Like one came in right as the other one left. It was like yeah. my Halo buddy got replaced in situ and just like Oh, hi, new Matt. <laughs> You just called Jeff Newman from now on. <laughs> Jeff is married I did, and I did. two children. Yeah, three. Three? Oh, no. Jeff? Two. Jeff. Two. Jeff two. Yeah, Jeff is two. Living with that girl doesn't narrow it down much. <laughs> Which one? He the was one... living with that girl when he lived in my basement. No, no, no. Well, she was only here he for... A girl. No, the girl who's living in the basement was was Lisa. No, he was living it he was living with the girl that he ended up moving to Missouri with for a while and then came back. That that was the black haired chick. Then he was living with Laura for a while over in Strongsville, and that stopped. And then years later he met Therese and they're happily married now and have a fairly recent just now starting to walk small child crazy it's a good kind of crazy but it's crazy yeah uh steve i'm using uh bluetooth headphones as my microphone and they're on max volume so i don't think there's anything i can do to make them louder i think he can jake can turn them up in the thing i don't have separate audio i i looked i did no my best. uh dots in the bottom right on the thing yeah you should be able to in, in his frame on the stream together, you can turn him up and it should increase the volume. We'll give it a shot here and see what it says. You say something? Uh, hey, that sounds like it worked a little bit better. So, I, I we, we, we talked a little bit over break and I said I was just going to kind of let you go ahead and lead your story about why you're back in town and how things have gone and how you've been doing in general. Yeah. So the last few months of my life have been kind of a, a weird permanent change position. They've been kind of a weird uh, mix of uh, mental health struggles. So I took uh, FMLA off of work to go into an outpatient uh, mental health program. Yeah. Which has been fine. Like, you meet every day for a couple of hours, you get to talk to, like, a group therapy session. 
Uh, last week, I ended up going to an inpatient medical facility because I was having a very bad time. Uh, and that ended up being the biggest mistake I think I've ever made in my life. I had such a horrible experience while I was there. Most of it was because... Uh... Oh, that's fun, moving back to Cleveland. Uh, most of it was because uh, when I got there, they said I tested positive for COVID, even though I felt perfectly fine and had had no symptoms at all, no fever, no cough, no, no, no symptoms at all. So I thought it was a false positive. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, they put me in isolation, so I had no TV. Uh, they didn't bring me any books. They didn't bring me any sort. Like they said, they had an iPad with two-way video on it, so I could sit in on group therapy sessions. They never brought me that. <laughs> I didn't get a book until Thursday. Uh, they brought me word searches. And you know how mentally stimulating word searches are. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, and then uh, the big thing happened was a doctor told me on Thursday, you're going home tomorrow. And then tomorrow comes along and he says, I'm not letting you go home until your parents come pick you up. Well... My parents lived six hours away. Yeah, that's not like they could just manifest there immediately. And you, you're, I don't understand that. Yeah, apparently he called my mom and told my mom that I was on the verge of killing myself at any minute. And he would not release me unless they were here to pick me up and take me back home with them. So my mom's freaking out. Yeah. I had told him I felt fine. Like, I, I feel good. I'm just, I'm bored and I want to go home. Yeah. Apparently me being bored because I was in isolation was a symptom of a reason to keep me there longer. Uh, d d yeah, this isn't making yeah. a whole lot of sense on their part. Yeah, so I got out Saturday morning because uh, my parents left at 3 in the morning on, on Saturday to get there at about 9. Because they were going to come later in the afternoon, but after they talked to the doctor and my mom I literally begged him to let me leave, and he said no. She's like, we need to get there as soon as possible. So they got there at 9 in the morning. I ended up getting released at like 10.30. Even though the doctor said first thing in the morning, which to me, first thing in the morning is between 6 and 9 a.m. Right, right. Like that's where I define first thing in the morning. Not 10.30 is like late morning, early afternoon time. Like, Yeah. <sighs> morning has well I started. They didn't order me a breakfast because they 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 I told them I'm gonna be out first thing in the morning. Right. So we get out and I was like, okay, it's ten thirty, I haven't eaten yet. So we go to IHOP and I have the first decent meal I've had in a week. Because hospital food. Yeah, no, I get that. Uh, yeah, and then uh I went home and then on Monday I came into town and because the doctor said he didn't think I was stable enough to make the drive home. Clearly he was wrong. Right. Right. I actually made that drive home, and what I did was I made a playlist of songs that I know the words to, so I was singing to myself the whole time, so I was just having a grand old time, which is what made me think of wanting to go to a uh, a karaoke bar. I gotcha, I gotcha. And I'm, I mean, I'm absolutely yeah. still down for that. We'll have to pick a time when I'm not doing eight different things, but you know me in karaoke, too. I'm I'm 100% down for that. Yeah, and I know they usually do it during the week, so that's why I was trying to see, because I, like... I assume Saturday works the best for everybody, but it's, it's got to be during the week because that's when they normally do karaoke. Yeah. Although, depending on where we go, I'm sure we could find it any old time. Corky's probably does it every yeah. night. Yeah, and then I ended up uh, talking to uh, their, like, uh, uh, customer service line, basically, to complain about this guy. Yeah. And I let them know that, by the way, I looked this guy up afterwards, and he has some pretty scathing reviews online. Yeah, I know. I know. We his said like. Is, <laughs> Go ahead. His average score is a one point eight out of five. We're not. We're not. We're not going to drop names because we kind of blah 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 blah. But you'd mentioned wanting to like read some of them, and I am a hundred percent on board for hearing some of the other experiences people have had. Yeah, I got to look him up. I'm glad that you went and sought help. I am. I am pissed and sad that it was that kind of experience but i i do want to say yeah. that i'm very glad that you were willing to seek out that help because both of us know a lot of people that don't and uh you know i myself fought for quite a while before i i was willing to reach out for therapy and then i 
started talking to a therapist and got got myself turned around a little bit in a good way so yeah so one of the ones i saw is it was like because i don't want to read the ones that are like giant walls of text like four or five paragraphs long yeah but this one was someone was saying it was like he prescribed the medication to me and i said i've taken this medication before i had a very bad reaction to it so i'm not taking it he went and got a court order saying you have to take this medication wow. which i didn't know you could do i mean because he lied to the court saying that she was uh uh this person was a uh, mentally unfit to physically uh, no they were they were physically fighting with them on taking medication they were like not they were like physically slapping the medication away fighting with the people and they're like that never happened i just said i've had a bad experience with this medication before i don't want to take it yeah no that mm. Mm, yeah which resulted in them ending up being in an inpatient facility for over a month because they didn't want to take a medication that they knew they had a bad reaction with yeah I don't, Neuro communication, not communicated, uh, bad communication, horrible doctor, condescending, bad communication. I don't, I don't get like, I don't understand how people keep their licensure with, with that kind of stuff on their record. Yeah. Because it's one of those things, like he apparently made the decision that I was completely off the deep end, ready to kill myself at any moment after interacting with me for less than 10 minutes. I don't I don't get it like that's that is one all, of the things this, and this all spawned from I didn't even make an attempt or have like a plan made out I just had a hallucination from lack of sleep yeah and that's what ended up leading me to go in man people like that it's make like I didn't it make an to attempt I didn't have a yeah I didn't make an attempt I didn't have a plan I just had like one of those things where it's like this is weird enough where I think I should go see someone immediately yeah and it ended up, because uh, I was telling Fuzzy about this, when I left, they gave me a paper and said, like, hey, can you identify any triggers or stresses that cause you anxiety or depression? I wrote down the doctor's name on the sheet. <laughs> Appropriate. And yeah, then I called then I called their helpline and made an official complaint with the hospital about the guy. Good. And I left them a scathing review online, too. As you well should. As you well should. That that's not an okay situation at all, man. No, it was really bad, and then that's why because I was actually supposed to return to work yesterday. Yeah, like that was my original return to work date, but uh, I need to contact my. Yeah, that story is fucked. I need to contact my regular therapist and talk talk to them because uh, I either need to get a temporary like or a part time return to work order or get my uh, get my uh outpatient extended yeah no because if i can return to work part this is the one thing if i can return to work part-time that would probably be the best thing for me right now but the company i was working for doesn't offer part-time positions so i don't know if they would go for that well they don't have part-time they told me i'm sorry you work 40 hours and you don't work for us i am I, I am hopeful that you can find a resolution to that one way or another that that works for for meeting all all the needs you have in that situation the other option, the other option would be to move back to Cleveland and live with my parents, but I just signed a lease. Yeah. No, I can understand that making it trickier and everything too. Yeah, you so could I'd live have, with I'd me. Have to pay for the room until they found. I have to. I'd have to pay for the room though until they find a replacement. Yeah, I'm saying if you didn't want to live with your parents, I have f empty rooms. Uh, living with my parents is not the problem. It's it's like I said, I, I just know. signed yeah. a lease. So it's like one of the things, like, I was at uh, that card shop today, and they had a Help Wanted sign off. I could work there. I know a good amount about uh, a couple of card games. I don't play Yu-Gi-Oh! That game is fucked up. That game? Okay, I don't mean to totally change the subject here, but, like, now, now you got me worked up, because a couple of the people I'm close to play Yu-Gi-Oh! I, I, I was making jokes earlier about like, oh, I'm going to have to relearn magic because it's so complex and Commander's a new format for me and all of that. Yu-Gi-Oh! is unreal in how complex it's gotten. It's... Because it's... Uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! doesn't have... Um, 
like blocks they don't they don't have vintage standard pioneer they don't have formats yeah they have yeah. a ban list and every other card is legal yep yep it's 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 unreal it is absolutely yeah unreal. so magic has their their formats where like uh vintage is basically every card ever printed modern is just the last two years standard is its own thing pioneer is a uh from what i understand it starts at one expansion and just every card that's been released after that it'll always stay at that point yeah so a lot of people like pioneer because the card pool is larger than than modern or standard which i get uh, but and still. then uh and then commander the ban list for commander a lot of it is things that are just horribly unfun or the power nine yeah like or cards that just don't work in the format like that just completely break everything because uh yeah they don't want people like well the, the one of the things was like they banned black lotus for optics they said like we don't want people to think they have to drop thirty thousand dollars to play this this format yeah that's what vintage is for yeah vintage is for the whales vintage vintage, vintage is pay to win it is there is skill and there vintage is for strategy. people who can afford it's for people who can afford black lotuses and boxes yeah yeah that's that's a true don't eat my headphones don't eat my headphones, Sarge. Sarge is a good cat, though. She is. She's a sweetheart. I'm excited for you to come over and meet the new one, Madison. He's he's mm -hmm. excitable. <laughs> See, he's yes. yeah. I just got back into Magic uh, like a year ago. I hadn't played a card game for a while, and then my roommate uh, taught me how to play White Schwartz, which is a weird game. I am. I am the not name familiar. It's not German. I am very curious. Uh, they now. take. They take. Uh, because I have, I bought some starter decks for it. I have uh, uh, how to pick up girls in a dungeon and Guilty Gear Strive are the two franchises I bought decks for. Okay, I could dig that. So they do animes. They do video games. There's a Batman set actually. Uh, they did Hollow Live. Uh, and yeah, it's just, it's a card game. The basic rules are complicated as fuck. Uh, but once you get the hang of it, it's not that bad. Because it's like, all, all the cards in your deck are either characters or spells. And cards will randomly become resources. Cards will randomly become uh, your damage tracker. Hmm. Uh, some cards go play in certain areas, characters attack, there's certain special abilities that go off and things, that everything's worded awkwardly. So yeah, it's, it's, it's complicated enough where I, I would not want to try and teach somebody how to play it. Understandable. Understandable. It, there are a lot of games that are like that where I'm interested, but they're complex enough that I can't commit to them. And uh, Arkham Horror is a good example, or the other one, uh, Betrayal at House on the Hill, or Betrayal Legacy, you know. I love it, and I will play it with people that know how to play, although I'm always the guy that you have to remind me of the rules every once in a while. I could not I, teach I another person. I will play, play Betrayal. I love that game. Yeah, yeah. And when you're when you're in a game... It's easier to keep track of what's going on. Be betrayal, I like. Yeah. Betrayal Legacy, gorgeous. I'd love to make a game like that. Yeah, but it's like for Magic, I have no problem. Because the base rules of Magic are easy. It's when you get into the nuts and bolts of it, it's very complicated. Yeah. Because the rule book is like 300 pages long at this point. Both of that type of game, and Magic is included in this, is not a game you play once. You don't get the real sword you once, you play it once, you never get it. That is a game you need to play many times over and over, and probably with the same group of people. Yeah. You do not play Betrayal and House on Hill once. You get together every week. It's like you have to treat it like D&D. &D. You have to get together and play that same board game or that same card game multiple times until it becomes second nature. It is not we are reading the rule book live and figuring out and we'll never play this again. You need to play them over and over and over. Oh, yeah. And Betrayal has like 25, 30 different scenarios you can get. So every game is different. Yeah. Yeah. 
I mean, I, I remember I, I played the last time I played it was in 2010. I was at Gen Con. I played three games and two of our games. We got the same haunt. <laughs> the, the odds are not astronomical, but it, it, it is pretty unlikely that would happen. So, yeah, it's kind of wild. It's like rolling a critical miss with advantage. It can happen, but it's really unlikely. Throw that cat. <laughs> but, um... Where was I going with this? Yu-Gi-Oh! and the wall of text cards. And the card that is oh, the yeah. trolley problem and all of that. There's, there's an upper bound of complexity... At which I'm no longer having fun. And Betrayal walks right up to that line. Is there a PC version of that? Betrayal? Yeah. Uh, I'm tabletop 100% sim. sure that it's on um, Virtual Tabletop. It is, because we went to go play it with that, that group of people from Florida, and that's when I, like, rage quit, because they're just like, click the thing, oh, like, yeah, do we- the thing, and I'm like... I, I told you the game. I have no idea what's going on. You told me to do an action. I'm like, I literally don't know where that is on the screen or what the fuck yeah, is happening. I thought you knew how to play. No. Yeah, so that was my bad. What, that's one of those where, like, the mechanics of a board game and the specific order of things are something that can be tracked by a computer. And if that's not integrated into the system, you have a model in tabletop sim. I understand that. Yes. Because it wasn't an official one. It was just somebody right. modeled the game, but you still had to keep the state of the game at the player level. And just, you were physically using a virtual tabletop, but it's like, no, the game should be able to keep track of yeah. the state machine. I've played some of the games and I played it with that group too. There was a space building spaceship building block thing. That as you turn things over and got points and blocks and shits, it automatically, it had all the scripting. It had, it had all the scripting to like, okay, you, this card has added two build units to your queue and you got two blocks and you could just drag them out. And when you moved your piece, it knew to consume this or do like it had, it had state and that's fine. And more things have like, and I think that's all in Lua. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or a specific flavor of Lua. And I'm like, oh, God. God. Oh, God, I could get so into this. I, I must com- not I open that editor. Lua. I can complain about Lua for hours. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. It's the scripting language BizHawk uh, uses, too. It's the scripting oh. language you need to use for uh, Final Fantasy XI's Gear Swap app. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I've written Gear Swap Lua's from scratch. And it's one of those things where Everything works except for one line. For some reason, the code can't recognize. And I'm pouring over it for hours. I'm like, it's correct. I wrote this line correctly. But because I accidentally put a space 14 lines down in an extra space, this line is broken. The other thing to do is when you're doing that, if you copied and pasted anything from the internet that has double quotes, delete them and retype all the double quotes because there's a chance that if you copied from a web page, it out is actually converted them to not actual double quotes. It converted them to the curly double quotes, Smart but quotes, it was being yeah. displayed in a font that hides that. But you, so the car- the double quotes in your thing are not actually double quotes and the font in your editor is also hiding that. Yeah. Cause 14 does the same thing. If you're copying shit off of a web page, it does not actually have double quotes and the macro editor in 14 also hides that. And they're like, no, just go through every line and delete the double quotes and retype it. And it'll work. What's a good time too is realizing that you had a piece of your gear spelled incorrectly for three years. So every time you were casting a spell, you weren't changing out one of your pieces of gear. Ooh. I had uh, one of, on red mage. I had the chess piece misspelled in uh, for chain spell. The chess piece would increase the duration of chain spell by 30 seconds. I did not realize I was not getting this extra 30 seconds Oof. for what's, years. What's the name? What's the name of that scripting MMO game I was looking at? 
I don't know, but now you have my attention. Uh, it, it's Screeps. I've I've heard the he, name. I I never looked into it, but I have heard the name. Uh, Steve in chat was saying that's why I don't do tech as a hobby. There's there's a game called Screeps, and it's an online thing, and it's a like it's an online thing with servers or the community servers too. But like you program the AI of you know your things, and you have to write the code to do it. And people can attack you and it all attacks back at that. But it's it's a programming MMO. And it's like, oh, this is great for programmers. Like, no, because they don't want to do that. They want to they want to pick up the controller where you don't have to use the brain and just yeah. go pew, pew, pew and not have to, like, do anything. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I don't want to do my job for uh, recreation. Yeah. 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 But yeah, cir- circling back to to betrayal. If there was a dedicated app that kept track of state, if there if if they automated the parts of it yes. that are automatable, I would be playing that online every Saturday. I don't have the room to do it physically, and I don't have the patience to do it physically because there's so much physical setup and manipulation and all of that that I understand it's part of the appeal of a board game, but there's a lower threshold. There's the upper threshold of this game is too complex for me to enjoy. There's a lower threshold of if you remove some of these elements, the game is not as complex. That's kind of where betrayal is for me. Here's here's a perfect example of that thing, though. Monopoly. Every, it's, been, it's old enough. Everybody functionally knows Monopoly. Regardless of how complicated the rules actually are, everybody knows, knows Monopoly. So if you remove the automatically hatred, people will play Monopoly because fundamentally everybody just knows it. If you took out, and some of the modern versions do this, if you take out the tedium of having to deal with the money and keep track of the, like all the individual cards for all the properties, and it was just like, okay, you own that now. And and the money was just a number and you had a little debit card thing. Like it just added to your money. You don't have to like move pieces of paper. Monopoly is actually relatively fun. Oh yeah, the millionaire version that uses credit cards. Yeah. Okay, I have a personal bias against Monopoly, but that's just me. Yes. Monopoly is a poorly designed game, but uh, and it's one of those things where when you watch those videos on the strategies on how to win, and if everyone's trying to apply those same strategies, it doesn't work. Right, but it's one of those games that once you start to get behind, it's a win more, lose more game. Yeah. Okay. Monopoly is a bad. It's just an example of if the T, te- if you remove the tedium parts, the game is actually fun. A lot of board game games are like a that. a lot quicker. Yeah. Yeah. Monopoly takes forever because people don't know how to do math and they don't want to deal with the pieces of paper and trying to make do all that. And then which card is this? And the, if you turn that into, if you turn Monopoly into a game of numbers, by making the machines do all the tedium of the state. It is great. A lot of board games, when they got translated to virtual tabletop, become less horrible. Yeah. Because you don't have to, you don't have to do pieces. There's not oh, that the work involved anymore. Japan was almost perfect. Yeah. No, 100%. 100%. Yeah. Um, what I want to play is um, there's a board game that came out in the 80s called Public Assistance. It's Monopoly, but welfare. Okay, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm into it. I'm intrigued. Uh, it was created by uh, people who clearly are making fun of people on welfare because all the board spaces are absurd. I've seen a video of people playing it online, and I'm like, I want to play this game. It looks, it looks so dumb. Hmm. Time, time to to do some research here. Oh, another game that is horrible to play in person, but when it's digital, it is amazing. Carcassonne. Yes. Yes. When the computer can just calculate all the squares you have and you're not sitting there trying to count, when it's just, okay, this is who won. It's like, yes, this game is amazing. 
I, I'm, I'm bad at Carcassonne. I cannot play that game. I'm... Yeah, Public Assistance is going for about 500 bucks on Amazon. I'm getting some... Product of its times vibes here. Why bother working for a living? Yes. We'll get some food stamps, liquor, coke, and then have a party. I... I have thoughts about this. My my curiosity is still there, but I have some thoughts about this. It's really bad, but just re- like I just listen to people read what's on some of these squares is so good. You get uh your your benefit, your property tax due. Yeah, oh, have really illegitimate nice. child. <laughs> that's a good square. It's that's yeah. It it's it's definitely telling on itself a little bit there. Yeah, like you can uh you can get arrested, you can you can go uh you can become a prostitute, you can become a drug dealer. Wild. I am curious if anyone's bothered putting this on tabletop simulator. I should go go search it out. Problematic problematic indeed <coughs> there's also a there's another board game called class struggle which is communist monopoly you don't play, you don't play as a player you play as a class of people so there's like the capitalists the working class the students uh the professional class and the way it works is if you're a lesser class like the workers or the students you can't win the game you can only ally with a major class and hope they win the game. Wow. Wow. Yeah, the working class can't win at capitalism is basically what the game is saying. I, I mean, there's a level of truth to that. There's a very large level of truth to that. Y'all know I lean hard left. Trying to start my own gaming commune. <laughs> I don't know, man. I'm just going back Good to Good news. Falling. <laughs> oh. Oh no. Oh no. It is it is on there. tabletop simulator. Let me let me just subscribe I'll to subscribe. that. I'm going to have to like play it later, yeah. Something we could um I was banned in the 80s. That sounds about Something... right. Something we should consider doing at some point is uh stream a game night of this style oh 100 percent, 100 you know go that get, would be amazing go get tabletop sim or something and get you know, a couple people you know non-structured just throw you know <laughs> i can well, make y'all play too. there is a there is a website called spell table that uh wizards of the coast runs yeah, where, the, like, four people join into like camera a four player card. square and play magic. Yeah. The problem is though is that they haven't really updated it or supported it in a while because it doesn't make them any money on its own. Yeah. Yeah. And apparently people cheat like crazy on it. Oh yeah, no, I'm I'm sure of that. Yeah, people who cheat at a casual game are very annoying. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, you oh, got damn. the you got the card view. You got the card view. I need to set up my second camera. I still want to set up my piano cam for the music streams, man. Yes. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta remember to do that. I gotta remember to do that. I did, I did say I would build you that mount that, to put your uh, keyboard stand on wheels and then also give you a camera mount. Next time we get together, I, I want to talk a little bit more about that and what, what I would actually want for it and all of that. And then we'll kind of price it out and whatever. It, it literally give me the measurements is, uh, and I'll draw you a diagram and it's you know maybe 20 bucks the hardware store all divers too it's a it's a co-op game <laughs> there's no PvP I mean I like that as a as a professional coward I like today. that I don't know game's fun though so I remember when when the game came out, uh, the day before, a group of friends of mine, we all watched uh, Starship Troopers. 
all There's too appropriate. Same vibe. I'm doing my part. Yeah, exact same vibe. <laughs> that reminds me, speaking of games that you have played while you are in town, not not on the show, I have some questions to ask you about some games you've played. Because you played some of the Battle Royale games for a while, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I played PUBG a little bit. All right. All right. Yeah, I have. Yeah, that was about it. I have questions for you and thoughts to bounce off played, you just I've to get another Mo opinion. Honestly, I've played MOBAs uh, a bunch, but yeah. Battle Royale's not so much. Okay, okay. Just kind of running through because I have... I try, I try not to play them much anymore, though, because they are very rage-inducing. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I can absolutely identify with that. Um, as As I've been trying to write new things i've had some ideas and you would be someone i'd like to include in a test audience for things like you play video games i make them but the only thing i play are casual games i spend four hours a day sorting grocery store shelves for fun i need an actual gamer's opinion that reminds me of a story of someone that uh in another twitch community there's a girl who uh, apparently when she went to disney world they went in the Lego place, and they spent four hours just organizing Legos. Yeah. So after they were done, the Lego store gave them a certificate and a free minifig. It, 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 it me. It me. For real. Oh, man. Can do, but yes. it's it's the, the Lego uh, pick-a-brick wall. Oh, Lord. That. <laughs> I was watching my roommate try to play a little to the left, and she had a panic attack. So, oh my god, there's so many. I love watching people. I love watching people play that and watch them just like lose their absolute shit over. It like, was so the, entertaining to me. <laughs> it's amazing to see people that don't, they can't like recognize a pattern. Yeah. What I want to do is I want to play it and stream it and just purposely get puzzles very, very wrong in the first try. There's. People raise about, if ra you rage about how. If you hit escape, there's an option to just let it be and skip the level. Just leave it. I don't care. Like, ah, that's good enough. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's my motto in life is that's good enough. I like the way their hint system works with the with the eraser and like like what? And you like because it's the answer and then it's scribbled over and you erase the scribble and you're like, oh, OK, I see what you're doing. So you don't have to like. Here is the answer. You can, like, reveal a little bit of it. Mm. Or, like, if that, they're my pencils. I can put them in any order I want. <laughs> I, I will say a little to the left is a lot of the reason I started Can Do. I'm, I'm sure you you've, you've been able to infer that, but... Have you seen people playing the uh, supermarket simulator that just that came out? Like it was a big. It's been all over Twitch a lot, and it's basically 3D. A huge part of it. It is like go stock the shelves, set the prices, and then you know run the counter thing. But like a huge part of it is taking picking up the boxes and putting the products on the shelves, and I'm like. I know games take a while. Yeah. I know Jason just made can do, but it's weird that this came out. This came out and it's such a big push immediately after that, that it's yeah. like, did you secretly pick up on a mental vibe going out in the universe or something? I it, it is a very valid possibility. I cannot rule that out that like, I just got hooked up to the hive mind. Weirdly. Yes, I don't understand those games where people pretend to go to work. Yeah. I like this. Some, some of it I like, can't. Like, uh, like truck driving simulator. That one I kind of get because, you know. You're driving. Driving on, on its own can be hard. And just driving, yeah. Just driving yeah. On, down the road, seeing places. Or like flight simulator, I get why that's fun. But shelf stocking simulator? Well, no, it's, it's not just stocking. It's a whole supermarket. It's like you have to place the orders and then go get the boxes outside and bring them in and put them on the shelves and set prices. And then until you hire a person, you have to run 
run, you know, pick up the thing and be dupe them and put it in the bag and deal with people. And it's a whole simulator. And it's like, Oh God, this has got to be nightmare fuel for anybody that's actually worked in a store doing any of these parts. Whoever's been a cashier yeah, I wanna, or I a stock money to do a thing that I used to do for work. The flip side of that though, the, the thing I will say about it is if you can do it without the pressure, it's a whole different experience. I will sort imaginary grocery store shelves because I can do it leisurely at my own pace and I get the satisfaction of everything being lined up neatly when it's done. I may not get paid for it, but I can also take my time and stop any time I want to and not get fired for that. <laughs> The taking a break whenever you want is one of those things that, like, if more jobs did that, I get why they don't. But it'd be nice to be like, I need five minutes. Yeah. Be like, I just need to be fuck off for five minutes. Like, yeah. that customer was really annoying. I need to, I need to disappear. A hundred percent. I have said time and time again at my day job, I'm the luckiest guy in the world for exactly that reason. If I need to take a break, I can take a break because I demonstrate that the things that need done will get done. The flip side of that is like my days are not guaranteed to be a fixed time eight hours. I'm okay with that. I'm salaried as long as it's not you expect eight hours and then some out of me. You you expect some amount of constructive work out of me. And as long as I can provide that, I don't necessarily have to do all of it on a certain schedule. They want certain hours so that you overlap when you need to work with other people, which I absolutely get. But the rest of the time, it's like, no, if you need five, ten minutes, get up and walk away. Go go pick your nose. Go take a bathroom break. Go outside because it's extra nice today. And then come in and stay a few minutes later when you're done. The work's yeah, gonna get done. Don't let you do that. No, they absolutely do not. They absolutely do not. And they should they should. That yeah, should it turns out treating your employees with even just the slightest bit of compassion will keep them working there longer. Yeah. As it turns out, who to thunk it? Treating it's people like, like human beings. That raising their pay a little bit and treating them like human beings will cause less turnover, thus saving you money. Yeah. I wonder how low the turn turnover is at Aldi's. I... Aldi is pretty laid back, it seems. Yeah. And their starting pay wasn't terrible. I'd imagine their turnover is a lot lower because of that. And and Sheets is my kind brother, of similar. Yeah, my brother worked at, at Aldi for many years. He met his wife working there. He was a, he was a store manager before they they fired him because they sent him three people to train, and all three of them were complete morons, and he couldn't train them. Hmm. A million years ago when I worked at uh, Mark's, the, like, in my brief period there that I worked over the summer, I saw constant waves of people being hired and trained. And I asked him, I was like, how, how bad is the turnover? He's like, oh, it's ridiculously high. But the thing is, it's also like on opposite ends of the curve. Either you are going to quit in the first couple weeks or you are going to work here for decades. Yeah. Because it's either you hate it and you and they just are con it's either you burn out very quickly or you you never do. They never leave. The man the store manager had started there as a stock boy 30, 30 plus years ago. And this is 20 some years ago when I worked there. Yeah. But like he started as a stock person and just worked his way up and then he was a store manager and they just he just never left. And he was like one of the most loved managers ever. I can imagine. I hundred percent agree with UPS. Yeah. I worked there for uh, uh, one. I worked there as a. I unloaded trucks for one holiday season, and it was like that's enough of this bullshit. Yeah, yeah. I the very first job I ever had, I was a telemarketer for a four-hour shift, and I did not go back. Did you like leave on a lunch break and just not go back? It was it my it was my first shift, which was a short one in the first place because it was while I was still in school. So it was after school. I I did the shift. I went through the 15 minutes of orientation. I let people scream at me for four hours. 
and then I was out. I would never, never go back to that. <laughs> were you calling them or were they calling you in this call center? I was calling. I was making the outgoing calls. Okay, yeah, that. Because it's, it's one of those things, if you're, if you're working in a call center where you're answering phones, there are people who need you for something. Right, right. But like, yeah, you're just bothering people while they're trying to have dinner. And my dad would scream at those people all the time. That's the thing is like, I, I wish I could make more people understand that that's not a job anybody wants to have. That is a job somebody thinks they need done, but that's not a job anybody wants to have. Don't punish the person on the phone. They don't want to be doing this either. I had a job for a short time where it was a, uh, I was sending out text messages. Yeah. So, you know, when you get those texts that's that was like, a, uh, you know, do you want assistance on, um, or do you want information on how to get, uh, you know, assistance on paying for medical bills and stuff? Yeah. So it was sending those out. So the way it worked was they had a software set up where it would pop up and say, here's the message you're going to send out. If you pressed any key on the keyboard, it would send that message out and pop up another one. So literally what I did was I got a tennis ball and just rolled it across the keyboard and it would send texts out. They literally recommended this to us. They said, you have to physically press a key. You cannot automate it. If you automate it, it's an auto dialer that's illegal. If a human presses a key to send the text, it's legal. That's ingenious and terrible at the same time. And the worst part was yeah. it sends well, from his number too. That's how they get around the mass singular bands after like the political text. That's why you get texts from a million different numbers. It's coming from a million different phones. Cause then it's yeah, not every, yeah, mass every, political every, every, every text comes from a different number. But then the fun part was we'd send them out all morning and in the afternoon we would do responses. Responses are done by humans too. They were mostly pre-written out responses. But if someone asked a very specific question, we were allowed to type in a specific response. Yeah. As long as it wasn't anything, like, outrageous. I get So that. half of it was people saying, remove me from the call list or fuck you, and then we would just remove them, remove the number from the list. Yeah. Uh, and then a lot of it was just responding. But I did do sometimes when someone would say something really off the wall, I would respond with a really off the wall response. Just uh, And then every <laughs> once in a while, you'd get a re-response from them. And they'd be like, oh, my God, I didn't realize you were a human. I thought it was a robot. Nice. Nice. I I'm like, like yep, yeah, I'm a human. I get, I'm get. i making uh, decent money, actually. They paid like 20 bucks an hour, but uh, the, the number of hours per day wasn't consistent. Yeah. Some days they would, we would run out of phone numbers to text after like three or four hours. Fair. wild though. Yeah, because they would buy a list of phone numbers every day. And some days there were enough to go for a whole seven or eight hour shift. Some days there just weren't enough numbers. I get that. I get that. But since I wasn't talking to people, it was all text. It was really I literally, while I was sending the text out, would just watch movies. It was it was a good job, but the problem is it was also a uh it was a contract. So like I got in a contract uh for two months and then they didn't have another one ready to go so like oh we don't have more work for you right now so i had to go find a real job we were we were trying to figure out if a, a mechanical way would do it like could we get basically a more more robust than just a drinking bird but like build something to just you know push a button i literally bought a machine that was for spamming buttons on a keyboard it was a little like C thing that had a flat part in the bottom and then a motor up here with a with a with a knob that would go up and down. So you'd slide it under the keyboard so it'd hold the keyboard and then line up. Yeah, and then line it up by what key you want it to hit and then just it ran on USB. You plug in the computer, turn it on, and it would just literally just automatically. <laughs> so it was physically pressing a key on the keyboard. The structure of the rules around that is so weird. So weird. Yeah, if a human presses the button that sends the text, it is not an auto dial. Yeah. So it's legal. Man, that's crazy. Because someone <laughs> was asking, like, they they did they would did a pre like before the shift started every day. They have a little meeting to say it was like, all right, well, here's the content we're sending out today. 
here are the standard responses that you're going to be able to use. Uh, here's a website of information if someone gives you a less common question. And one guy asked, said, I'm disabled and my fingers don't work really well. Can I automate this? And they're like, no, if you automate it, uh, it's, a, it's a crime. Yeah. I get it. I, I, letter of the law, what color are your bits, all of that stuff. I, I, I understand it. Whether or not I agree with it is immaterial, but I understand it. I don't know, man. I, 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 I've been through a handful of jobs. I, I did the telemarketing thing for four hours. I delivered pizza for a while uh, and learned how to I, I remember you had a mem you had a chapter about me in your memoir called "The Man of a Thousand Jobs." <laughs> it's true. It's true. How many? What, what, what was your record number of W twos in one year? Uh, nine. <laughs> I think I think my record is three. I think my record is three. But I, I, my I, record was I had two. <laughs> I've had two jobs that I've worked at. Uh, my first job, I worked at an ice cream store. Then my brother bought a franchise, and I worked for him. So I consider that the same job. Yeah. Uh, I, I did that for like nine years. And then after that, that's when I bounced around from job to job to job to job to job for like three years. Uh, and then it was in when I was about 20. I think I was 25 when I started working at the BMV. I worked right. there for almost ten years. Man, yeah, I gotta tell you, if if you don't like customer service, the BMV is not the job for you. But I stuck around there for ten years. And you want to know the best part? Tell me. I started at eleven, and when I quit, I was making thirteen. That's how many raises I got in ten years. That's gross. That is so gross. Uh, it's not a government job. They're privately owned and operated. It's still so gross. It's, it's that frustrating. That seems is what it is. wrong. License bureaus in Ohio are publicly owned and operated, or privately owned and operated. They're not public entities. Man. Basically, think of it as a franchise. The state franchises them out. It... <sighs> I, but like I, all, but all their prices and stuff are set by the state, so it's not like they just make stuff up. You're just doing uh, all the the main stuff, yeah, like the licenses and the, and 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 paperwork and stuff. Those prices are set by the state. Extra stuff we did, like we would set, we would laminate people's temper tags. We would sell people sets of uh, screws to put on their plates. We would sell those little plastic things that you put um, handicap placards inside them so they don't disintegrate in the sun. Yeah, those things you could set your own prices for. What other restrictions we also, do they have uh, about like ways to make profit like that? Yeah, there were there's you they had a lot of restrictions on that. And then uh well there's the hard restriction was on notaries. You can't charge more than two dollars for a notary by law. Right, right. <laughs> and I, then I think I owe you the th I think I owe you like ten dollars worth of notary money then. <laughs> yeah, but I, I'm not required to charge you. I just oh, the maximum okay. I can charge is two dollars. Oh, okay. Yeah. But my notary license expired uh, last April. So, and if I I couldn't renew it anymore, I'd have to retake the test. Yeah. I don't know. My 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 head's still like floating around the whole concept of how could I make a profitable but not bad place to work BMV. I don't know. Can you can you have a BMV in a place that also has a liquor license? Uh, we had a uh, one of those machines where you could buy uh, scratch offs. Hmm. Mm. That was probably that was probably pretty something something to do while you're sitting there waiting. Yeah, that's exactly the theory. Is people would buy scratch offs, and hell, you never know. Maybe you win enough money to pay for your plates while you're there. Because how did it happen? A guy came up and said, "His I won fifty dollars off a of scratch off, and we could cash it in for him." Oh, yeah, because we had the, we had the machine there to cash him in. Yeah, 
I so yeah, we'd be like, all right, cool. Do you want to use the fifty dollars towards your plates? Yes. All right, cool. Let me just let me just go scan the ticket and make sure it is a winner, and then yeah, I'll I'll just knock the fifty bucks off your price. That's awesome. That's yeah, that awesome. happened quite a bit. The one thing that infuriated me the one time is the one time I bought a twenty dollars scratch off and didn't win. Like an hour later, a customer came in and bought the same scratch off that I bought and won five thousand dollars. Oh, oh, that's brutal. Yeah, it was very upsetting. So if I dropped, I'm like, I don't want to drop another twenty dollars another ticket. But if I had, I'd be up, you know, forty nine hundred and sixty dollars. That's how they get you, though. That's how they get you. All right, next ticket's always a winner. Yep. I, I I can't say that I am immune to it either. The one thing though that made I think working at the BMV tolerable though was is that we sell a product that you have to have. Yeah. And if you argue with me too much and I tell you to get out, you're not getting this product you need. Now you need to drive across town to another barrel and wait in line again. Yeah. Yeah, they go they go really out of their way to I love too. Like I once I'm a customer complaining and another customer called him out and his bullshit and I didn't have to do it. Good. It's one of those things where you tell them the price, it was like, this, this is highway robbery. It's the most expensive I've ever lived. And some guy's like, I just moved here from California. I am happy to pay these prices. Yeah. Let me let me tell you what it's like in other parts. Cause, yeah. Yeah. Because I, I just, when I moved to Illinois, it cost me $300 to transfer my title and my registration. In Ohio, it's 75 bucks. Yeah. They can, they can scream highway robbery all they want, but we we in Ohio have extremely reasonable rates on that stuff. Yeah, my plates expire in April now, too, because Illinois is dumb. They expire on the registration date, not your birthday. Yeah. So my plates expire in April. So I feel going to need check on in Illinois, and it's probably going to be, like, I think it's like 150 bucks to renew. I have, I have a whole situation going on with that, but we won't go into it right now. But, uh, yeah, it's... Uh, I, oh, yeah, I heard about that. Uh, afterwards, I'll give you some hints on how to get around that. All right, all right. I I, I, I will I take you up on that. I worked there for 10 years. I know all the tricks. Oh, good, 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 good. There's a, there's the, the, the cheap trick that's less legal and the more expensive trick that's technically completely legal. So we'll go over those. Sounds like a plan. Sounds like a plan. Well, how long does the show normally run for? Uh, we usually wrap around eight thirty ish, so we're 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 getting up on time here. Um, oh yeah, my clock's an hour slow because it's in the wrong time zone. Two ish, two two to two and a half hours. Yeah, two Cause hours cause plus a take... break plus a little. Yeah, yeah, because we take a break in the middle and then yeah, about two hours of content and. The remainder's kind of fluff on either end. Yeah. Well, I've exhausted my uh, my topics of discussion at this point, unless you want to talk about magic cards more. Well, I have one more question that I want to bring up, just for a thought. Sure. Because we always kind of end with the Hurgle Minute, where I talk about game-related stuff since we're doing the game studio semi-seriously now. Has anyone mm. made a BMV simulator game? Is that a thing that exists uh... yet? I think Papers Please is probably the closest. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm really I remember Chris curious. watched me play Papers Please, and I'm like, I'm a professional paperwork checker. Yeah, Papers Please, but it's not a a, a, a gate checkpoint. Just people are coming. Probably, I mean, probably. I mean, look at. We're just gonna type it in. I see a lot of BMW. Well, I should search DMV too. Uh, DMV. Our driving simulator. Yeah, because in Ohio, it's passed. the DMV. DMV, DMV and BMV are different. Yeah. I'm not seeing anything. A lot of them are focused around, you know, they're connected to the the organization of motor vehicles and they're the test simulators or the driving yeah. test simulator. But I'm not seeing... Because what you can do is... Because when I started working at the at the BMV, it was because the owner of the BMV at that location had been fired 
because someone was selling fake IDs out of the place. <laughs> I did not know that. Using, uh, yeah, there was a woman who was, uh, she was getting paid like, like $100 an ID to make state IDs for illegal immigrants using oh, okay. fraudulent paperwork. Okay. okay. Yeah, so there no, were real state not. IDs. So then once you have a real state ID, then it's really easy to go get any kind of other yeah. identification then then even upgrade that to a driver's license. But she but apparently they had been tracking her for years and then one day the fucking like FBI showed up, kicked all the employees out, locked all, or kicked all the customers out, locked the employees in and interviewed everyone for hours. Good lord. That's... Yeah, cuz a lot of the people who were still working there were people who were there when this happened. And they were able to determine that this woman was doing this all by herself. Nobody else had any idea. But they fired the guy who was running the place because it happened right under his nose. Yeah. Which, I mean, I can kind of understand. I got the job because they they lost a few employees after that, too. Yeah. And um, the guy who bought the place, his his mom and my mom live across the street from each other. I got you. So So she knew I needed a job. I am definitely adding a, a so, yeah, BMV I was simulator. Gonna say too, if you if you make a BMV simulator, make a thing where someone will approach you about making fake IDs, and then there's a, every time you make one, there's a chance you can get caught and arrested. <laughs> he, he he wants to uh, uh, put Cobra Stan as his height of resident profit and get you out of debt, but. Yeah, I don't I don't want to copy papers, please, directly. But there's a lot to take from that. And there are a lot of different services they offer, too. Do you ever have to do, like, a, a, a homemade car registration thing? Um, it's called a... Um, oh, I forget what the technical term is. It. Uh, Experimental there's a, there's vehicle? A word for it too. If you have a, if you have a, a non-standard vehicle... You can get the state highway patrol to verify it is uh, street legal, and they'll make a title for it. Nice, nice. Yeah, so there was a process for that, and then uh, basically people would come in with a title, and the the make would be like uh, I forget what it was technically called. The, but the make would be like uh, some something pre built or something like that. Neat. Because, like, if you bought a kid car or you made a car out of from, like, if you built a car from the ground up of, out of spare parts, yeah, like it's it's gonna you'd have to get it verified, and then uh, if it didn't have a VIN, you'd have to have them create one for it. Neat. So yeah, there was procedures for that, and then on small trailers, there was, like, if you bought a, a like a five foot trailer from Home Depot to haul like a lawnmower in. Yeah. Those didn't have VINs. So you would just basically and depending on the size of them, uh all you would need to know is how much it weighs. So if you brought in the original paperwork that had the weight on it or took it to a weigh station and it weighed, you handed me a weight ticket and say, I bought a trailer. All right, here's a plate for it. Cool. This is way more fascinating yeah, no... than I anticipated, honestly. Okay. Like, yeah, we're yeah, we're they, yeah. They they didn't title those. Yeah, screw uh, uh, night shift. We're we're doing <laughs> B and B simulator, and we're and su- subject matter ask subject matter expert, Mister Pib, <laughs> our, our our paid consultant. I am the uh, yeah, I'm the consultant. Perfect, perfect. Yeah, I have ten years of experience in the industry. I am. It was just funny when I moved to Illinois. I mentioned that to the lady working at the DM or the BMV there, and they're like. Do you want a job where we're hiring? I'm like, I I don't know. <laughs> I don't want to work here. If I had my druthers. The other thing is like anytime I would say it was like anytime anyone moved here from Ohio or if anyone said they were moving to Ohio, I would have all of the answers. Yeah. It's not an everyday thing, but like I learned a lot of stuff about how the way other states operate too from working there, just from hearing stories from people. I was also mad New York changed their driver's license. Their driver's license used to be a soft plastic Ooh. that was nigh indestructible. Mm. So like they were bendy. Yeah. They would they would they would they would like you can manipulate them easily, but they would always like if you crumple it up into a ball and put it down, it would just slowly form back out into a flat ID. 
Man, you man. couldn't rip them. They wouldn't crack if you bent them in half. That would man. also be really hard to forge then, because that's not just like printing it on like standard plastic cardstock. Yeah. Yeah. They switched to a standard plastic cardstock because it's cheaper. Oh. I'll never forget the time that uh I got what one of one of my temps, I think like the second time, they I had to wait because they went to go do it. And do you remember the 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 holographic yeah clear coat? They're like, oh, it ran out. Oh, we have to change it. And she so they had to like they changed the roll. And the lady had put it in upside down and one side had the the thermal glue on it and the other side didn't. She put it in upside down. So when they ran it through, it melted slightly to the front, but the glue was on the top side and they handed it to me and I'm sitting there looking at it and and it detached because it didn't thermal glue onto it. So I had a sheet of the holographic clear coat tape and a mm. thing. And I'm like, and I and I kept it and I, you know, when I went to go back to like, I need you to remake this because I could like, I don't want to keep this. I'm I'm going to be a good boy. I'm going to give it back. But do you realize how much I could sell this for? Because somebody could instantly put this on a fake ID and make it look instantly so real. And they're just and they they lost their shit. They're like, oh, my God, what the hell? And I'm like, I think because once I was slightly tacky, I'm like, I think somebody put it in the machine. and They checked and it was still like that. And they're like, oh, crap. Everyone we have printed yeah. for a week is like this then. That's wild. Because I'd come back like a few days later to actually take the take the test. And it was just like, oh, God. Yeah. So it's one of those things where uh, they have to track down every person they print an ID for and get those IDs back. Yeah. Yep. And they'll say, I was like, we need to reprint. We'll reprint it for free. Like, we're going to eat the cost on that. But you need to come back and return this ID and return this plastic. Yeah. Yep. So I remember what happened to us one time was uh, because after they would print, they would have like the roll because it, it'd be like the roll of like colored tape that they mm -hmm. would use. It'd be red, yellow, and blue, and they would use the three layers. Well, when the roll was done, there was negatives basically of every ID we printed on the roll. So we would have to put the roll, we'd have to lock the rolls up and then send them off to a shredding company. Well, apparently one time, one of our bins fell off their truck. And it had one of those rolls in it. Ooh. And my boss was like, if we don't track down this roll, I am in trouble, even though it's not, not not my fault. But because it was from my bureau, I can get in a lot of trouble for this. Yeah, we, they didn't end up finding the roll. But yeah, it had the negatives of every ID we had printed for about three days. That is unreal. That's amazing. I love it. Can I just say, like, yeah, tangentially yeah. related to this, man, one of the things on my wish list is one of those PVC ID card printers. I don't want to make fake IDs. I just want to make... You just want to make IDs for things. Yeah. You want to make cards of things. Yes. Yes, yeah. exactly. I don't you know what I would love. use, but... I would love a card that had my savey save gas station barcodes on it but i want one here and one here and like i could fit four of them when i go to hand it to them i'll cover up the and i'll only show them the barcode for okay i'm at circle case scan this one turn it this way oh now i'm at sheets turn it over oh now i'm at the other gas i want because you could fit four of them on one cart because you don't need the strip you're just scanning a barcode but i can have one card in my wallet and you could have it actually you know thin and not a sheet of plastic yeah like a, a thicker sheet like, I want one thing, and that's four cards in my wallet. I could just get out of there. Uh, I'll make you one. I know it's not the same, but I'll make you one. Yeah. I got I, I mean, I can't. Yeah, but it's I, like. Yeah. Or, and Mr. Pibble will know this. Do you remember the coin card? Oh, yeah. That. I'm mad that thing, I'm mad that thing sucked. I was so excited about it. Not for money, but a larger e-ink screen would have been perfect for storing savey save barcodes on it because you could just yeah. push it. Yeah. Like and I got one... my, my Speedway card and my Mariano's card and my Costco card. Like I would like to only have to carry around one of these. Well, my Costco card's a credit card, but it's also a photo ID, so it's like I, I okay, I understand. Card's got a picture on it. Yeah, 
but all the ones that are just a bar some of them do have a, a mag strip but i don't think i've ever yeah the speed rate card is a mag strip but i've never swiped it all it does is the same thing it puts in the number yeah but i, I was uh, looking yeah, at my wallet and i'm like I... <laughs> people, people look like credit card I, uh, where's, where's my, my cash app card? I did not get a sleeve for it, but they do let you make your own design. Careful, careful. careful. Cash app cards. I know, I know, I know. Uh, it just says magic money rectangle. <laughs> That's good. I was, I was pretty proud of that one. I'm not going to lie. You, I, I was you, 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 you beat like the fry card. Yourself. That, that beats the fry card. I didn't think anything could, but that. Yeah. Do I still have those? No. I had a bunch in my... I have an ID in my drawer, and I don't know why. Is it mine? Oh, I'm not subscribed to that person anymore. I designed a, uh emote for somebody, but I'm not subscribed to them right now, so I can't, dis I can't put it in chat. Oh, tragic. I designed an emote for somebody. Where's, where's, where's Ganon One Party? There we go. I designed two emotes for somebody. Oh, I have, I guess. The one, the one I made. For some reason we were talking about eggs, so I went in uh, MS Paint, drew, made an egg shape, and just wrote egg, <laughs> and sent it to him. He made it an emote. Nice, nice. Yeah, so it just it just says egg exclamation point with a picture of an egg. I guess technically I also made this one. Sort of. I made the, the gif at rotating. minimum. Yeah. From from tilt and tumble. You mean the jit? Yes. No. I will face Jod and march backwards into hell. Okay, it is a gif. I that is a hill I will die on. And that's not a rule of acronyms, though. That it has to match the pronunciation of the word. Correct. Yes, because you're familiar with GURPS. The generic universal role playing system. Yes, it's yes, not GURPS. It's GURPS. Correct. Correct. But I just don't like the sound of GIF for G. You don't like peanut butter. I I I I, I don't like if, if the peanut butter jar the said GIF, I would call it GIF. Choose the developers. Choose GIF. That's a hill I will die on. I'll I'll be in a vocal minority on this one, and if we never agree, that's all right. We'll just use ping files. I remember I was watching a video one time, and it was right when the discourse between the two pronunciations was getting popular, and he pronounced it jife. Oh oh um um, oh what's the thing um? Yes, guy. No no, the other thing that came out was jismal. Oh yeah. <laughs> As opposed to JSON, it could have been the JavaScript markup language or JavaScript metadata language. Gizmal. Yeah. Ew. It's been 10 years and I still have to force myself to say SQL instead of SQL. I that can't... one, uh, it, it's acceptable either way. I don't, I don't like SQL. I have said many well, times I'm not a rational person, this podcast alone, but I don't like SQL. Chris, you did remind me, though. What's your favorite jizz band? Does it have to be a whole band or is an individual musician acceptable? Like if there's one well, whaler I like better than anybody else. Whaler. <laughs> I just love that they, they decided to call the genre of music in Star Wars jizz music. Yeah. No. I absolutely okay. get it. It makes sense because at the time... Jazz, and just slightly different named, so it, it made sense. Ah, uh, innocence. That's, that's not a thing. There was four other vowels they could have picked that would have not. The point that, is, you know, Droopy McCool. Okay, bad. I like Droopy McCool. Logo That's fair. That's have an actual answer. 
you a size noodles guy or why can't I? Uh, I'm gonna go with neutral milk hotel. <laughs> In a cargo freighter over sector C. Time. I mentioned that one time, and you were familiar with them. Like, how do you know this? <laughs> I like music. You know all the obscure bands. I I. I was uh, mad you don't have any Captain Beefheart on your uh, on your uh, request list. My request list is. Not... I don't even know what to make of my request list. One of these Fridays is going to be like, we're going to start going through the request list. We're going to take off songs that I either don't know but put on there anyway or don't like to play enough to allow people to request it. We're going to add the songs I play a lot. You need a you need a you need a button or something that interface with your, your song list that pulls a random 10 things and just fills your queue. Yeah. And then and you're and go through and play the ones and then anything you don't play, have a button to say, hey, if it's like, no, I don't want to ever play this. And it goes back, goes back the other way and takes them off. That would work. That would work. But when there's no, when there's no other request, just give me give fill the queue randomly from my song list. I'll find things either I do know how to play, I don't know how to play, I haven't played in a long time, but you're just like, why is that even on there? Like that's not even a thing I could. Yeah, yeah. I think I think I do need to do that. Although I haven't been leaning as heavily on the request list anyway. That's a Tonberry in that in that in that GIF right there. Mm -hmm. Aw. <laughs> oh, terrible. I love it. I love it. I found a random pill in my drawer and I'm trying trying to identify it. Uh, be be careful. It might be colchicine and not cough medicine. They did not specify a cough medicine. They just said cough medicine. Fancy brand chewable cough medicine. <laughs> there was there was an episode of House where the premise was uh, that the pharmacist filled the order incorrectly and they had pills that were almost identical and one was a gout medication. Yes, I saw that episode. Yeah, the yeah. pharmacist filled it correctly, filled literally from the bottle to the thing. The manufacturer put the filled that bottle wrong. Point is, no, it was in it was in the disclaimer in in the thing that they wanted. They they clarified that the pharmacist did not mess up because they didn't want it to seem like they were blaming blaming the pharmacist to because it was at the height of like farm tech shortage and oh, all that. Yeah, and they didn't want, yeah. They didn't want to say the pharmacist did a bad job. They did clarify that the pharmacist did correctly fill the order from the bottle that they assumed because they're not going to like they don't like they logically check. Oh, if I get a bottle that says this, it is it is that it was the menu. I probably opened up, saw yellow pills. and was like, yeah, that's right. This yeah. is serious. We could yeah, make now I know it's on my descriptions. There's a description of what the pill looks like on the bottle. Yeah. Yeah, I'm. I'm. Does does mine have that? I should. I should look at that. Hmm. Yeah, it'll say like small round white pill with the number fifty uh, engraved in it, or something like that. This medicine yeah, is a white oblong shaped tablet. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there's a description. So it's like if you look at it, it's a white oblong shaped tablet. You open it up and they're round. It's the wrong pill. Interesting. Yeah, they started doing that. I think they do it everywhere now. They've been doing it for a while. This medicine looks like Barney Rubble. <laughs> the, the, do, you have, do you have some Flintstones chewable vitamins? Yes. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. I wish they had that description. Flintstones chewables are perfectly fine for adults. You just take two of them, and they are a very well-rounded amount of vitamins and stuff, and they are far more entertaining to take than stupid adult centrum gummies or whatever. They just are dumb and chewy and stuff, but oh, hell yeah, I'll remember to take two Flintstone chewables. Absolutely. I have got notification my headphones are about to die. Well, that's all right. I think we're about to wrap for today anyway. Thank you all for being here with us. Feel free to join us down in the Discord. You never know what we're going to get up to after hours. If I don't see you guys before Friday, we will catch you Friday. And in the meanwhile, right. thank you for hanging out. 
uh, Diet Mr. Pip, thank you for joining I, I us. Became re I became recently re-obsessed with uh, Delete If Not Allowed. Yeah, I saw. I saw. We'll have to cross-post some of that stuff over there. All right, well, well thank we'll you guys. We'll have to get that to be a, a huge community. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. We will catch you guys next Wednesday if I don't see you before. Thank you again for joining us. And we are, as soon as I turn the music up, put up my goodbye screen. <laughs>